Hello, welcome to our speed down uh, about installing Leap Micro 5.5. We'll be uh, using KVM in our demonstration, and you just need to go to get OpenSys.org, uh, choose the current version of Leap Micro. As long as your device uses USB boot or supports USB boot, you want to use self install image, which is the preferred one. Uh, users of Raspberry Pi without USB boot uh, can just directly dump the pre-configured image with DD on the SD card. Um, you have also QCO uh, version of that, which you can just import to KVM. Um, so we are setting 30 gigs. Uh, we call it Leap Micro 5.5. And uh, yeah, it will be using NAT. So in entire installation will take roughly two minutes uh, from install to the basically being able to manage the system through the web browser, through cockpit. So the self-install image is may not look fancy, but uh, the job is to basically take the very same raw image that you would dump to your uh, Raspberry Pi or so. It's just have the comfort of, of putting that image on an install media, which then writes it to the drive. You can choose which one if you have multiple disks, and then it will basically enlarge the uh, partition, you know, to the size of the disk. Which uh, so it's that easy. It's super efficient, and I really, really like it, especially for these type of devices, which is single purpose. So we are at uh, roughly one minute, and we are done with the installation. So the image is fully written to the disk. Uh, we are using M2 SSD disk, so it's 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 quite fast. Uh, yeah, and we are booting the system. So uh, users who are using Ignition or Combustion, which are basically dry code extensions uh, that uh, will configure your system without user attendance. Uh, so you could put your root password in there or, or a hash, password hash, and, uh, and pub key set which services should be up and running, do whatever you need, encrypt the disk, for example. And, uh, and that's it. Uh, otherwise, if you don't use ignition or combustion system, will uh, simply uh, welcome you with the juice first boot wizard that you've just seen. And now uh, we will enable cockpit. So you can, uh, it's, you can actually see it in the message of the day. And from now on, you can fully maintain the system, including running containers for the web browser. So we are at uh, two minutes and entering cockpit. It's running on port 9090 and and two minutes 18 and we are in you can access terminal here uh, but what I would recommend users uh, is the first action is to enable podman because uh, it's not running by default. Maybe you want to use different uh, different runtime Docker K3S. Uh, so it's up to the user. And we are basically done setting our container host. Make sure to check other videos too. Thank you.